Hello, welcome to Wilson's Barbecue. In this video, I'm gonna be taking you through my top five fundamentals for when cooking brisket. So I wanted to make this video because I get a lot of questions on Instagram and on YouTube around cooking brisket and how to make a good brisket. Um, normally from people who have tried and are maybe not quite happy with how those turned out. Um, and 99.9% .9 of the time, I'm always coming back to one of these five things. So I wanted to share them with you in one video. So there's no right or wrong way to cook a brisket. These steps just work for me. And I think if you are struggling with cooking a brisket or maybe there's an element of your brisket that you're not overly happy with, watch this video and there might be something in there that might help you. I'm also gonna be giving you the opportunity to win this new Texas AF rub from Good Rub. Um, I've been working with the guys at Good Rub to get the perfect Central Texas style rub uh, for a month or so now. And we finally come up with this as you can see, as seen on Wilson's barbecue YouTube. Um, this is what I used in the video today on the brisket that I cook in this video. Um, and you'll see that it helps to get a really nice consistent uh, bark and it also tastes incredible as well. So um, this is a perfect mixture of the right salt, the right pepper. Um, so stick around, you'll find out how to win this among some other uh, incredible seasonings from Good Rub. So stick around and I hope you enjoy. So fundamental number one is obviously the meat. There are loads of different briskets out there that you can buy, um, particularly in the UK. We see a lot of rolled briskets, um, a lot of grass-fed briskets. Um, but I think the one thing that you need to be looking out for when you're looking to make a you know, Texas-style barbecue brisket um, is marbling. So you really want to go for a, uh, ideally a packer cut brisket. So that's the point and the flat um, still connected rather than a rolled brisket. Um, but the one thing that you're really looking for is good marbling. So you want to make sure that there is nice amount of marbling, intramuscular fat running through the flat of the brisket. Um, and that is really going to set you off on a good foot. If you start off with a dry, overly lean brisket, um, you're really going to struggle throughout the cook. There's an argument between grass fed and grain fed, and that's a discussion for another video. Um, so for the purposes of this, I'm just going to say that you want to go for a nice, well marbled brisket. As I've said, Ideally for this, you want to be looking at a whole packer, a whole packer cut brisket, um, and you can speak to your butcher and they may be able to get one in for you, or if they're a whole carcass butcher, you may be able to give them a bit of advance notice and they might be able to hold one back. Or you can go online and use Tom Hickson of Smithfields, which is where I go, and they do a huge range of packer cut briskets. So you might find that you're able to get hold of uh, rolled briskets, and that's generally the flat, rolled up with some twine, and a lot of people message me um, that have cooked rolled flat briskets um, and they've simply just cut the twine off and rolled it out and cooked it like you would a packer style and they've been disappointed that it comes out dry. So you can do this, um, but I would really recommend if the only thing you can get hold of is a rolled flat, and that's what you'll often find in supermarkets and in your local butchers, um, there are much better ways to cook that. Marcus at Countrywood Smoke has got a great recipe on his website, so I would recommend that you do that rather than try and cook it as we're gonna do it today. You'll just get a better result. The brisket that I'm using today is a Creekstone Farms USDA Prime brisket, and that is from Tom Hickson of Smithfields. If you wanna go and pick up this same brisket or look at their huge variety of barbecue meat, um, you can do so in the link below by going on the link below. And if you want to get 10% off your order, you can also use the Wilson's Barbecue 10 code down below. The brisket that I'm using is extremely well marbled. As I say, it's USDA Prime. Um, it's the cream of the crop. It's really, really well marbled all the way throughout. It's got a great fat cap on it. And it is, for me, the perfect brisket uh, to cook low and slow over 12 hours or so. Fundamental number two is the trimming. So for me, trimming is becoming more and more important. Every time I cook a brisket, I trim it slightly differently, and I'm finding that more often than not, the, uh, the way you trim the brisket hugely contributes to how that brisket comes out. So as you can see, I've made a real, real conscious effort to make sure that this brisket has a lot of good airflow. And what I mean by that is that there are no jagged edges, um, it looks really smooth, and I've used a really, really sharp boning knife to achieve that. Um, it kind of looks like what you would expect to see in a wind tunnel, um, a car prototype, uh, and that really is for that airflow to be able to, to, be able to get over all, all of the brisket 
um, and not have any dips or huge raised areas because what you'll find is those raised areas will burn and those lower lower areas uh, will pull up and you won't get a consistent bark. Sometimes what you'll find is that there will be a really nice black point end closest towards the fire, um, but you'll see kind of patchiness uh, across the rest of the brisket. And that's normally where someone has trimmed it um, and maybe gouged out a little kind of uh, concaved section in the fat. Um, what you want is a nice smooth layer of fat. You don't want any dips, uh, so be careful when you're trimming it to make sure that you're nice and even. Um, and that patchiness generally comes from the, the airflow that rolls over the brisket. Um, where it rolls over, if there's a dip, the, the, yeah, the air will go straight over and it won't render out that fat uh, that's in that little gouge. Um, and sometimes uh, juices and fat will pool in there and then that will make it impossible to gain bark in that little area. So again, trim it smoothly, make sure that there are no dips, there's no high points and you should end up with a pretty consistent bark all over. So I can't stress enough how important it is to have a nice aerodynamic trim across the brisket. We don't only want any bits of fat hanging off um, and generally keep it smooth looking, keep it looking aerodynamic. Um, use your hand to pat down the fat and just make it um, smooth in general. It's also really important to not trim off too much fat and it's also really important not to leave too much fat. So on this brisket, I left about five millimeters of fat all the way over the top, all over the fat cap. Uh, and the reason for that is that in order for you to achieve a really good bark, you need some level of fat. So you'll sometimes see people cut all the fat off the top of the point uh, because they say that there's plenty of fat inside the point and you know uh, you don't need all that fat on top. But if you want a really consistent bark, you need some level of fat. You need fat, acid and salt to be present in order to get a great bark. So if you trim your brisket down to around five millimeter all the way over the top, keep it aerodynamic, you will get a more consistent bark. So fundamental number three is the smoke uh, or the cook. So this encompasses uh, everything uh, unwrapped from putting it on the smoker right up until we wrap it. So the main thing I want to cover here is the temperature. Um, so obviously we're going to put the brisket on and then we're going to be cooking it for seven hours or so. Um, we want to be cooking that brisket at around 250 to 275 Fahrenheit or 120 to 135 Celsius. The reason for that is, is that you need that higher temperature in order to render the fat. Some people will cook um, at around 225. Um, you can do that, people do it. I've seen people cooking these 20 hour long briskets with a four hour uh, stall um, at 225 uh, or even lower. Uh, but I just think it's inefficient. Um, it slows things down and I don't think the fat renders and the, the collagen doesn't break down quite as well at 225. Um, so I would really recommend that if you have been previously cooking at 225 or uh, 230, cook between 250 and 275 Fahrenheit. You'll just find that you'll end up in the exact same place with a cooked brisket, a nice tender juicy brisket, uh, but you'll get there much, much quicker. So we put this brisket onto the smoker. Um, we're managing that temperature. We are spritzing every hour or so after hour three. Um, and all we're trying to do is just spritz the areas that are starting to get too dark. So you want to make sure that you're keeping those areas that are starting to get a bit crunchy, maybe looking a little bit burnt. You want to keep those uh, areas moist. You might go in there and give it a spritz all over, um, but in order to get a nice bark, you need to have a good balance between moisture in the cook chamber, and we do that by putting a water pan in, um, and also keeping the surface of the meat dry enough that caramelization can actually happen. You don't want to be soaking your brisket in, in spritz, um, in apple cider vinegar and water um, and soaking it because the caramelization just won't happen. Um, so what I like to do is open it up every hour or so after hour three and just give those real, real dark areas um, a little spritz with uh, apple cider vinegar and water. So I say I spritz with apple cider vinegar and water. Um, why do I do that? That's because you, ideally you need to have acid present on your brisket uh, surface in order to get the best bark possible. So you need to have acid, fat and salt um, and you introduce that acid by spritzing it with apple cider vinegar. You can use water, you can use um, 
anything you want really, hot sauce, um, ideally nothing too sugary because um, it could catch and burn um, over the period, the long cook period. Um, so I like to use a mixture of 50-50 apple cider vinegar and water. And I'm using that water pan just to make sure that there's moisture in the cooker, but I'm only spritzing the areas that are getting a little bit too dark for my liking. Um, and if it really, really starts to dry out and maybe the surface starts to crack a little bit, I'll give it a light spritzing all over um, just to make sure that the, the surface is moist enough that it attracts smoke, um, but not so wet that a bark won't form. So fundamental four is the wrap. So the first thing is what are you gonna wrap with? I personally like to wrap with butcher paper, pink butcher paper, uh, which I get from Pro Smoke Barbecue. Um, I like to use it because it's got a good balance between allowing enough steam to escape that the meat doesn't go soggy and you don't lose the bark that we've just spent six hours to try and create, um, but also it keeps a lot of moisture in. Some people like to use tin foil. I find that that just steams the brisket um, and uh, the, it breaks down maybe too much the meat itself. Um, and also doesn't l allow any steam to escape. So um, again, you risk ruining that bark that you've just spent a good few hours trying to get. You could go and not wrap your brisket at all, uh, but what I find is that you need that butcher paper wrapped tightly around your brisket uh, that collects all the fat and kind of goes and turns into like greasy paper um, to coat the brisket, soften the bark down a little bit and just generally hold the fat in uh, nice and tight to the actual meat itself. So knowing when to wrap um, is a question that I get a lot. When do you wrap the brisket? What internal temperature do you wrap the brisket? How many hours? For me, I wrap based on one thing and that is the color of the bark. For me, I like to wrap just before I'm happy with where the bark is. Um, so I like my briskets really dark, uh, almost black um, and glistening. I'm not gonna wait for my brisket to get to that before I wrap because I know that in pink butcher paper at least um, and in foil as well I know that the bark is going to get darker after I wrap it so I like to wrap as early as possible and the reason for that is just retaining as much moisture as I can so every hour after about hour four I start to look at the brisket when I'm spritzing when it gets to about maybe an hour 45 minutes away from where I want it that's when I decide to, to wrap. So I'm actually wrapping before I like the look of the, the bark. Um, again, just knowing that it's gonna get darker. I'm not gonna tell you what the internal temperature is on, the, on this brisket, uh, because I think it's so ins insignificant. Um, so again, just wrap your brisket real tight in pink butcher paper, uh, just before you're happy with the bark, and that should retain the most amount of moisture. It should help to soften up that bark that's formed. Uh, and you should end up with a nice brisket. So wrap it up, stick it back on the smoker or stick it in the oven. And then all we're doing now is just waiting for the internal temperature to reach around 203 to 204 uh, and you should be good to pull it off. So the fifth step in my fundamentals to the perfect brisket is a step that's sometimes overlooked uh, or a, a step that's sometimes taken but maybe isn't done quite the right way. Um, and that is the rest. So what I've done is I've cooked my brisket, my incredible Creekstone Farms packer brisket. Um, I've made sure that I've spritzed it. Uh, I've made sure that I've um, originally trimmed it really nicely so it's nice and smooth. Um, I've wrapped it, I've put it back into the oven in this case, and I'm watching the temperature and I'm looking for it to hit around 203 to 206. The next thing I wanna do is make sure that I give that brisket time to rest. So I like a four hour rest in a cooler and I find the longer that you rest a brisket, um, the better it turns out in the end. You don't need to use a cooler when you're resting. I just like to do it because I think that it prolongs the uh, temperature drop. So when I pulled this brisket out at 2.06 or whatever it was at the time, um, if I just rested that for an hour on the side, um, it's gonna drop quite quickly. Um, if it's warmer in the house or wherever you are, obviously it's going to drop slower. But generally, if you rest it just on the side, uncovered, just wrapped in that butcher paper, the temperature is going to drop. And it's actually, by the time you go to cut into it, if you're you know, resting for three or four hours, um, it's going to be too cold. So what I like to do <coughs> is take the brisket out of the, the smoker or out of the oven, pop it into a cool box, shut the cool box up, set a timer for four hours, 
come back and I will generally come back to an incredible, uh, well-rested, perfectly, uh, perfectly good temperature to be able to pick it up, hold it and slice it. Um, so as I say, stick it in a cool box. I can't stress how important the rest is. Um, brisket doesn't hold up too well once you slice it anyway. When you slice it, it tends to dry out quite quickly, but you can help minimize that by giving it a rest. So I would strongly recommend getting a cooler. Uh, they're really cheap on Amazon. Um, I'll pop a link below where you can buy one. Um, buy a cooler, rest it in that, and I guarantee that your brisket will stay more stay moist for longer uh, once you slice it and when you're serving it up. If you do have to rest your brisket on the side because you don't have a cooler, wrap it in a tea towel, wrap that um, butcher paper wrapped brisket in tin foil, then a couple of towels, um, whatever you can do to try and prolong that that cooling process the longer the rest the better so before we wrap this section of the video up um, I said I'd sh tell you how you could win the new good rub from good rub and all you need to do is head over to my Instagram find the post uh, that relates to the giveaway and follow the instructions on there um, and also make sure to give me a follow on Instagram if you don't already and give good rub a follow too so they were my five fundamental steps to the perfect brisket um, they might seem really simple and things that you you know you mostly do, um, but that's really about as complicated as cooking a brisket gets, in my opinion. I follow these steps um, all the time, and I haven't cooked a real bad brisket or one that I've been really really disappointed with um, in a long long time. And so follow these steps: buy good meat with lots of marbling, whether it's grain or grass-fed. Make sure that you get a good trim on it. Leave five millimeters of fat across the fat cap. Uh, and make sure that there's a good aerodynamic shape with no fat hanging off. Cook it between 250 and 275. Make sure that you spritz any burnt bits and make sure that there's moisture in the cook chamber. Wrap the brisket just before you're happy with the bark. Don't wait too long um, and don't wrap it too early because you want to make sure you get a nice dark bark at the end. And then finally, once it's cooked in that temperature, take it out stick it into a cool box, rest it for four hours. Let's see how the brisket turns out when you do cook it that way. Right, so here we are. This has been rested um, for about three and a half hours. Um, hopefully, if you follow all the steps uh, like I've done, you'll end up with a really, really good brisket. Um, and I hope that when I open this up, it's gonna look good. I'm pretty sure it will, um, following the steps that I've talked about in this video. So, let's get it open, slice into it, and see how it's looking. So you can see all the butcher paper is nicely coated in grease, uh, which is what we want. So there we go. You can see nice bark, um, got a nice wobble to it, uh, which is what you want. Um, so we'll cut into it, see how it looks. So we're going to cut it at the where the point meets the flap first. Really juicy, loads of juice in that in that flat, uh, which is quite difficult to get. That's the fat there, um, that where the point meets the flat. Um, that's that juice coming out. There we go. So it's nice and thin. Um, you can see that it's not dried out at all. Um, hangs under its own weight, it's got a nicely rendered fat there, and when you pull it, just the slightest tug, it falls apart. So we'll try that flat. Wow. That creeps no farm crush is insane. I'll have another bit. Mm. So tender. Right, so let's get into the, the money shot. So this is the bit that I want, this is the bit that everyone wants, and this is the point. So just cut through. Let's see how that looks. I think that's pretty perfect. Let's take a quick slice from here. There we go. 
fallen apart, uh, as tender as it could possibly be. Um, possibly overshot the point, you can see how tender that is, it's just falling apart there. Um, the fat is nicely rendered so that would be edible, uh, probably cut some of that away because it was a prime so there was a lot of fat in there. But overall, I don't think you can ask for a better brisket slice than that. Um, and you can see there just, just how well that's cooked. It's dripping with juice, really well rendered. The flat is cooked through, nice and tender. So yeah, I'm happy with that. So, there we go. There's my five steps, five tips, five principles that I like to follow when I'm cooking a brisket. Follow these, I don't think you'll go too far wrong. And if you do try this, let me know. Um, if you like this video, like, give it a like, drop a comment below, follow me on Instagram, subscribe to the channel, it really, really helps. Uh, so thanks very much for watching. I'll see you in a couple of weeks for another video.